Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love the Jonah story. What's not to love about the Jonah story? There's action. Jonah is specifically told to do something, and he blatantly disregards it, running in the opposite direction. There's a boat and a big storm, and then he's thrown overboard. I'm sure he was not wearing his life jacket. And then, to make the story even more crazy, he is swallowed by a great big fish. What are the chances of surviving something like that? And yet he does. It's an incredible story. And a few years ago, I had a chance to be in a musical version of it, and we were singing sailors who actually threw Jonah overboard. And last week at Wednesday school, I was helping with one of the elementary groups, and the lesson that night involved crawling through an obstacle course, pretending you were inside the big fish, just like Jonah. Many of you probably got to experience that, and you probably won't forget that story for quite a while. I love the Jonah story. Well, except when I don't love the Jonah story. Have you ever noticed how these Bible stories sometimes aren't just stories that you can read that are about somebody else in a faraway time and place, and then you can close the book and be done with it? Sometimes these are stories that seem to be about you. God is speaking directly to you through the story. And Jonah is one of those stories. I had a Jonah-type experience when I was a senior at seminary. I was ready and excited to be a pastor, but I wasn't quite as excited about the church's assignment process. You see, we had to fill out a 25-page application, which was a lot of work, but not too bad. But there was one question we all agonized over. And that was about geography. Where was it you were going to say you were willing to go and serve? Being from Minneapolis, I wanted to stay in pretty close proximity to that. But I knew I had to say more than that. So I thought about it and prayed about it and talked to people. And I really, really stretched myself. And I said, anywhere in Minnesota or Wisconsin. You seem to know where this story might be going. I thought I'd given God plenty to work with. That's two states. But instead of saying to me, you're going east, I got a phone call saying, you're going to South Dakota. South Dakota? God, you're sending me to ministry in South Dakota? I barely even knew anything about South Dakota. Of course, I have followed those billboards across the state to go to Wall Drug. But there's more to South Dakota than that. I felt like Jonah, being sent one direction when I wanted to go the other direction. Have you ever had a Jonah kind of moment when there is something that you know you should do? It's the right thing to do. You're feeling called to do it, but you don't want to do it. Maybe you run in the other direction, or maybe you just seriously think about it. One of those kinds of situations might be when you're going to the, a doctor's appointment for you or a loved one, and you know that there is possibly going to be a diagnosis that will change your life radically. Those are times you realize you'd love to run in the other direction, but there isn't anywhere to run. You cannot run away from that. You have to face it. Those are Jonah kinds of moments. And it's in those times of uncertainty that stories like this actually provide us with a lot of comfort. Look at Jonah. God calls him to do one thing, and he does the opposite. Then he is thrown overboard, and he is swallowed by a big fish. And yet, God is there with him. Through all of that, God does not give up on him. 
And the same with the Ninevites, who are said to be very bad and sinful people. God sticks with them as well. And if God sticks with Jonah and the Ninevites through all of this, that means God is going to stick by us too. It doesn't matter what happens in our lives, in our country, God is there with us. Because this story tells us that God's grace and mercy is big enough for absolutely everyone. That means you and me, and even those people we find it very difficult to love. God's grace and mercy is for them as well. I have learned that. It's probably the biggest lesson I have learned from all of you being in ministry here with you at peace for the past four and a half years. Had I run in the other direction, I would not have been able to be part of this incredible ministry and what God and the Holy Spirit are doing in and through us here at peace. We experience this in so many different ways. When we are worshiping together and learning together and serving together, Last Sunday, for example, we had 370 families come to Necessities for Neighbors and 50 or 60 volunteers, and God was there with us in our midst. And last Thursday, we went to Food to You, and that is the mobile food pantry we serve at about five times a year. And as volunteers, we get there about 4.15, and we unload the truck that comes from Feeding South Dakota with all the food. And as we were doing that, a man came up to us, and he asked what time the doors opened to get the food. So we told him 6 o'clock, and he asked, was there a place he could sit and wait? Because he was almost two hours early. So we showed him where he could wait. But then one of our groups said, or if you wanted to, you could help us get it all set up. So he took us up on that. And we got to know him a little bit. He was brand new to Sioux Falls, didn't know many people, was running low on food. He was going to have a job interview in a few days. But at that moment, he really needed not only food, but some companionship. And he helped us with the setup, and he got his box of food. But then he also stayed and served and helped give food to everyone else for the whole evening. And what was amazing about that was that his actions of giving back to others, connecting with us, was probably more ministry than we did to all of those people there that evening. That is just one tiny example of how you see God's grace and mercy being for everyone, lived out each and every day through all of us, here collectively at peace and in our lives, in the community, and as we go about our days. God's grace and mercy is for everyone. And as we celebrate All Saints this week, many of you gathered here are probably remembering loved ones who have died, whether it was last week or last month or last year or a longer time ago. That stays with you, the difference that that person made in your life and the hole that it leaves. We all go through that kind of grieving process where there's anger, where there's denial, where there's depression. At some point, there's acceptance and telling stories and laughter, but it doesn't follow any kind of set pattern. And through it all, we need to remember that God's grace and mercy is for everyone. Everyone here on earth and after we die. Because what Jesus did for us in dying on the cross and rising again means that God's grace and mercy is for all of us for eternal life. We have that promise that God does this for us, forgives us for our sins, and gives us this opportunity to spend eternity with God. That is a promise we can cling to. And as the Apostle Paul said in the book of Romans, neither life nor death nor angels nor demons nor anything else in all of creation 
can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all our understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.